All right, guys, before we start the video, I just want to say thank you to Nico for becoming a Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, my friend. Okay, guys, we'll start by dragging in our animations for rolling and step back. And we're going to throw these into our animator and just make a connection back to the locomotion state when they're finished. Also, I may sound a bit different today because different microphone, different setting. I'm not currently in my office, and it is a little jarring to me to hear how different my voice sounds right now. Let's get those nice, neat naming conventions down. Charlie, say naming conventions for me. Naming conventions. Thank you. Next, we're going to add a bool parameter to our animator called is interacting. Now, this interacting parameter is going to act as like a, a safety net. And basically, if this is on, it's not going to allow us to do certain uh, things like roll or attack. Because you don't want a person to be able to roll out of an attack when they've started it right away or cancel any kind of animations by rolling. So we're going to lock certain things like rolling and attacking behind is interacting. Alright guys, I'm not going to use it yet, but quickly make a script and name it player manager. This will come into play very shortly. Next we're going to apply our locomotion and we're going to make a handle movement function and we're just going to encapsulate our old code into this function so it's a lot neater. Because right now our update method is looking a bit messy and I want to make it look as clean as possible. I want to always keep the update method looking nice and clean so we're going to pop that in there and then we're going to just going to call a handle movement on the update. Once that's done, we're going to go to our animation handler and create a function called play target animation. We're going to need a string for the target animation which we want to play, and we're going to need a bool for is interacting. We're going to say anim.apply root motion is equal to is interacting. That means the animation will only have root motion applied to it if the is interacting is true. Then we're going to set is interacting to the is interacting called in the function. We're just going to put a crossfade in there so it looks a bit smoother when we actually play the animation. Now we're going to go to our player controls and we're going to add a new action map called player actions. Then we're going to create one for our rolling action. We're going to set it to button, east gamepad. And we're going to set the second one to left shift on the keyboard. Great, now let's go to our input handler. We're going to make a public pool, B input. And we're going to say private void handle rolling input. And we're going to pass the float delta again. And we're going to say if B input is true, we're going to say roll flag equals true. And we're going to make a bool up here now for roll flag. Okay, now if roll flag is true, we're going to do something on player locomotion. So we're going to call a function for handling rolls and sprints because they're both handled under the same key press, which will be, you know, B and the controller. We're going to end up holding B to sprint and tapping its rolls. So handle rolling and sprinting, pass the float delta again, and we're going to say if animator.anim get bull is interacting, return. And we do this so you just can't roll whenever. If you're interacting with like a lever or some kind of thing in the game, you can't just roll out of it. We don't we don't want that. So if it's interacting return. If input handler dot roll flag, and you guys know this, just it's gonna we're basically gonna de decide the move direction when we're rolling here. This is very similar to the movement. And we're gonna say if the move amount is greater than zero And we're going to play the target animation rolling. So if you have any movement at all when you go to enter the roll, you're going to do a roll. And it's going to put you in the direction of where you were moving to when you started that roll. Whoops, I have one there on the overload I didn't need. We're always going to take the move direction out wide to zero just in case the animations are finicky. You never want any movement on the y-axis. You, you want to keep that grounded. And we're going to say quaternion roll rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation bracket move direction, my transform dot rotation equals roll rotation. So just basically roll, uh, uh, rotate in the direction that you're rolling. And we're going to say if you don't have any movement, then you're just going to play the back step animation. Very simple, very clean, very nice. So next we're going to put handle roll input and pass the delta on our tick input that we made before. See now we have our move input and our, and our handle roll input. And later on eventually we'll have handle attack input too. And then we're down here to private handle roll input and say b input 
equals input actions dot player actions dot role dot phase equals unity engine dot input system dot input actions phase dot started and that just basically will detect when the key is pressed and will turn the bool to true and here on update we're going to say handle rolling and sprinting and pass the delta now let's go in game and as you can see now if we tap the key we are rolling but oh we have a problem it looks like our character has detached from the center of our game object. You see how our camera is still following the center here, but our character is offset. And that's because the animator has used root motion to move the character. And you can see here now the, anim the apply root motion has been checked on. So we need to do something about that. And we want to turn off is interacting when we leave the animation as well. You see how that's on right there. We want that to disable when we leave the animation. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go in here and add a script for our animation. First, we're going to come back to the player manager, and we're going to say input handler, input handler. And we're going to get the input handler here on start. All right, now go on over to your input handler. And then make a bool for is interacting. And then back in the player manager, input handler dot is interacting. We're going to set that. To the oh, I didn't call the animator here, so we're going to go up here and call the animator, and we're going to call that on start here. So basically, we're going to say the input handler dot is interacting. That's going to equal to whenever the animator's parameter is interacting is true. We want that on update, so it's locked in. So that means if the is interacting bool is off on the animator, it's also off on the input handler. Okay, and now we're going to go here. We're going to make a script, and I'm just going to call that reset is interacting. And what this script is going to do is we're going to use this one here on on state exit. And every time the animation exits the state, so whenever, whenever the animation finishes, it's going to do what we encapsulate in this code. And in our case, we're just going to set the bool is interacting to false. Now whenever we leave animation, it resets. Perfect. Now we still have the problem of our character being offset when we uh, we do an animation. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say public input handler, input handler, and this is in the animation handler script, and we're going to call that initialize. Now we're going to make a void down here, and it's going to be on animator move. And this is when the animator moves to something. Okay? If input handler dot is interacting equals false, return. So don't run this if it's not interacting. I'm just going to say float delta equals time dot delta time. Oh, I'm going to need the, uh, the player locomotion here too because that's where we store the rigid body. So we're going to call that initialize as well. We're going to say player locomotion dot rigid body dot drag equals zero just because if you know how the drag sets to zero, this is, this is kind of important. We're going to say vector three delta position equals anim dot delta positions. So that's the animator's position, the delta position. Delta position dot y equals zero just in case the animations are funky. You always want to keep that y on zero. Vector three velocity equals delta position divided by delta. So divided by our delta dot, you know, our time delta. Player locomotion at rigid body dot velocity equals velocity. And what this is going to do is, when the animation is uh, is moved, it's going to readjust our our character's model to the center of the game object. So here in the player manager update method, just say input handler dot roll flag equals false, and that will reset the roll flag. The player manager will eventually hold a lot of the information about the player. So we're going to migrate some of the things to the script in future videos. So we're going to come here and add player manager to the character. And now when we hit play, oh, we have an error. What is this? Oh, it's supposed to be get component in children. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. great and now we can roll and look at that now you guys have rolling all right guys thank you so much for watching any problems that please let me know how's your projects going how is everything so far any suggestions you want to make please feel free to post them i appreciate any feedback that you're willing to give thank you and i'll see you in the next video which will be sprinting